Boise State University days where we first met. We get to study tonight. <laughs> we just signed our lives away. I'm so proud of you. Uh, How do you feel? I'm really nervous. We're a little nervous because there's a huge storm coming. We went to four different dive shops. They all have little variations. So we went with New Way Diving. It's like three buildings down from our hostel. and Yeah, it's a PADI certification versus SSI, which is another thing that we were kind of going back and forth on. So we'll be PADI certified in, God three, willing. in three short days. <laughs> the one thing I'm really sad about, but I get it because people are stupid, is we're not allowed to film anything when we're diving. So we're just gonna have to experience it and then we'll tell you guys about it after. Yeah. Day one is complete. The thing that's been really cool about this course, which some people would probably think is a little on the sketchy side, but I think it's awesome, is that your first training dive is not in a swimming pool, it is out in the ocean. So where today normally would have been in a pool and then just reading the book, watching the videos, we watched the videos in the classroom and then with everyone doing the discovery dives for the day, we got to go out and we actually had two normal open water dives on our first day. So everyone else is paying for four open water dives over the course of the three or four day course and we're probably gonna get six. We don't necessarily get to log all of them, but as long as we get the ones that we need to log, so we get, we're fine. And then the course doesn't come with meals or anything like that, so you have a lunch break. And then we went onto the boat, got in our two dives. It was a gorgeous day. It was supposed to rain today. It was perfect. I saw eels, clownfish, we found oh, Nemo. Baby, baby Nemo's. <laughs> so all in all, it was a success. We have the books with us. A lot of the places, they give you an online course that you just watch the videos at your own speed like once you get home at night, but we are watching the courses in the classroom. I kind of prefer it. It kind of makes me focus more. I feel like if I was doing it on my own, I wouldn't do it. We learned all about the equipment. So I, even after one day, I'm very comfortable setting up the equipment. I know all the nozzles and all the buttons, so that's really cool. And way beyond what I thought I would know day one. I was a little nervous by the coursework and the tests, but it is way easier than I thought it was gonna be, and yeah. it's way more fun. I mean, the truth is, is that people as young as 10 years old can get certified, so that's what our teacher kept reminding us, is like, dude, chill, this is for 10 year olds. <laughs> So, He's like, you can pass a test, yeah. Brayden. And Brayden's like, no, I haven't taken a test in like five years. I, I don't know about this. It's been good, and I will add that I'm very proud of her. This was my dream, not her dream, <laughs> but just seeing her out there and not freaking out. Also, another super funny thing is Patty is located in Orange County, where we're from. And it was really cool because all of the intro videos are all filmed in Orange County. So we were like, home, 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 home. Oh, Crystal Cove. Oh, Laguna Beach. Oh, look, they're in Catalina now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all of our favorite spots. But I gotta say, diving here is quite warm and much more colorful. So uh -huh. <laughs> I love you, California, but I love you, Thailand. <laughs> Per person, it was 11,100 baht, which is the standard across the board. So for the two of us, it was like $338. A piece. A piece, mm -hmm. which we looked into getting certified in California. We looked into it in the Philippines. Everywhere is well over $400. So for the same certification and the same lifelong ability to dive, we're doing it for at least $100 cheaper and in one of the prettiest places in the world. Yeah. Ooh. Day one was good. <laughs> Day one was great. <clears throat> Come on over. <sighs> Day two is complete. Yes. 
and I'm so thankful it's over. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. Today was all about skills. I'm not the most comfortable swimmer. Like, yes, I can swim, but I'm not great. And some of the things that you have to do underwater are so intimidating. <laughs> So, yeah, don't have your 10 year old do this. I know he said it's for 10 year olds. Not for 10 year olds, 10 and above. Not just straight for nope. 10 year olds. <laughs> nope, no 10 year old should be doing this. No 10 year old could pass the exams. I didn't even get 100% on the quizzes today. <laughs> I got a 10 out of 10, a nine out of 10, and then an eight out of 10. We have two more quizzes tomorrow for day three. The thing that's really cool about the company that we're with is they guarantee your final dive to be at Sail Rock, which is supposed to be the best dive site in the entire Gulf of Thailand. But unfortunately, we have a huge storm coming, so the chances of getting to go there tomorrow are like one in 10. So it's probably not gonna happen. We had some choppy water today. Visibility was really low, but today was all about skills and it was way more intimidating than day one. Day one, I was like, we're diving again. This is so fun. Yeah, I can take the regulator out of my mouth and find it, no problem. Today was like, fill your mask completely full and be able to drain it, take it off and actually swim. So you don't have anything blocking your nose, but you're still breathing through your regulator. Swim for nine meters, simulating an emergency ascension, but instead you do it horizontally, so you have to swim for nine meters continuously breathing out, and if you if you take a little breath in, then you have to start it over again. Neither of us messed up, but. No, but it was our guide and two other people with us today doing a refresher course, and so it was kind of scary not having like 100% attention on you while you are learning and practicing these skills. <laughs> on top of the stress of all that, we love him but our instructor has a extremely heavy Italian accent and speaks very quietly. So, so when it's you hear the wind rushing past your ears, you hear the waves, there's a gazillion other people on the boat. I was really, really, really struggling. We just had some stressors today that we didn't have yesterday. The way the days look is you go to the classroom at 8 a.m., you watch the videos, you do the reviews, and then you talk a little bit with the instructor, just some pre-dive conversations before we get onto the taxi, mm -hmm. go to the docks, head out to the dive site, and then you spend like three hours, four? three or four hours out on the water. It's yeah. typically two 50 minute dives. And tomorrow is exciting because it's the deepest we'll have ever gone in the ocean. 18 meters. 18 meters. AKA 60 feet. AKA open water certification. Certi Certi <laughs> certification. Cert certification. Certification. <laughs> AKA that's what we will be certified uh, to dive to. 18 meters. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked. Give them an okay signal. Are you out of air? Do we need to share some air? <laughs> I want to go up. <laughs> what else have we learned? Down. Descend. Um, equalize. Equalize. Which is blowing out of your ears. Thin pivot. <laughs> What's that? Knees on the ground. <laughs> Let all your air out. Keep breathing. <laughs> Taking photos. Oh, in Asia. you have to read how much air you have left in your gauge. Full tank is 200. So half or 100, 50, or you can do 50 plus 10, 20, 30, 40. Quiz, what's 140? <laughs> so then 100, 10, 20, 30, 40. If you're 150 or higher, you just say you're, you're okay because there's nothing to worry about at that and point. And if you're at 50 or 60, it's time to make your ascent back to the surface, take your safety stop, and uh, anyway, it was a good day. It was a good day. We did it. <laughs> day three's done, and we're certified. Where do we begin? Um, let's begin with the storm that rolled in last night maybe the hardest rain I've ever heard in my entire life. 
100%. It sounded like people were dumping pools on top of our tin roof. So we went to bed at like 10.30 p.m. thinking there's no way in hell we're gonna go out on a boat tomorrow. There's no way. We woke up at five to walk over to the shop by 5.40. Huge lightning bolts across the sky. We were like, we're gonna go. They're gonna say, nope, not today. To go to the shop and our instructor says, we're still going to Sail Rock, the place that we thought there's no way that we would go. So we go to the dock, it's huge lightning bolts still. We get on the boat, still huge lightning. Pitch black at this point still. We get around the island and then the waves came. The we swells. had swells that were some of the biggest I've ever been on a boat for. And the boat is just this super janky wooden Thailand boat. Like, yeah, it's not like you're on a large like catamaran with more stability. And that's kind of, I think, where the difference is between getting your certification in a country like Thailand versus doing it in a United States or something like that, is the quality of the equipment and the quality of the boats and probably the quality of the service. We loved our service, but once the wave started, we both got super seasick. We've never been seasick in our entire lives, and this was that bad. Taylor vomited a couple of times. I was borderline, but the level of service here was difficult for me because we were on the verge of puking, and yet every single last person that is on the staff is a chain smoker. And so for the duration of the entire boat ride, they were blowing smoke in my face. And between how I was feeling from the motion and, and that going into my lungs, because all they, they just kept saying, okay, just take some deep breaths. I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to take a deep breath? So anyway. <laughs> There were a lot of things going on, but we made it to the site. We get in the water, and the first thing we do is the CISA, which is the emergency ascent. So you enact, if you are out of air, you go to the top, you use your last bit of air, and you blow it out slowly so that your lungs don't overexpand once you get to the top. So that's where we started, and it was really kind of scary because the waves that we were in, and then this jagged rock that we were next to, it and was, the boat. And then the boat, and then all the pe it was just... I definitely had a lot more anxiety this time around. The waves were oh, yeah. huge. I was already really intimidated with going deeper today and all the different skills that we would still have to do. You had just gotten done puking. I had just gotten done puking, and I seriously had tears in my eyes as I was jumping into the water, telling myself, you can do this. <laughs> it's two more dives. And I was, I just was like, there's no way I'm finishing today. So yep. I threw up, jumped in the water, that's fine. And then this was supposed to be dives three and four. If this was any other tour company, this would be three and four, but for us it was five and six. Technically. So that was awesome. <laughs> By that time though, I was just so seasick and tired from all the early mornings. I was kind of okay being done. Yeah until dive number six came around when yeah. we came around the pinnacle and got a nudge on the shoulder and there was a whale shark. Seriously, the only thing that we've wanted to see during this dive, and it's not guaranteed, they don't see them that often. It is not whale shark season, and not only do we see it, we swam with it. Like, looked each other in the eyes, it was cool. And then number two, our assistant instructor said that he has never in his life swam in a school of fish as large as the one that we got today. That was wild. You literally just turn in a circle and all you can see is a massive school of fish. And it's like, okay, I'm just part of the school now. And, and our instructor would punch in the air and then there would just be like this, this hole and then it would <laughs> and then go, and then go. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we went out there. Overall, like, that was a whirlwind of a three days. I have a headache, not from diving, just from, like, trying to retain all the information. It's one thing, like, reading it in a book, but it's another actually applying all of the skills underwater. It was so cool. It was awesome. And we got I back, and you have to take a written test. Yeah. So, on top of everything you do in the morning, you still have to remember that when you get back, there is a final exam. It's way scarier than it was once we took it. We both got, well. No, I know. 
We I got missed both five. With a 90%. He gave us both a 90% because the question that she got wrong was a little harder to understand. We got A minuses. Regardless, if you have a 75% or above, you pass. So either way, I passed. And now we have our official log books. Our log books. Mm -hmm. It helps you look back at all of your dives. So after every dive, you, you record. So for example, our last dive today, we put that it was di our dive number four. We put the date. We put the location, mm -hmm. which was Sail Rock. We marked that we dove with a computer, which today was our first time we ever used the computer system, which reads your depth and your time remaining at that depth, depending on how much air you should have left. We got personal comments from Pino saying very well done. Look, he snuck that in there. What? Anyway, long story short, we'll stop blabbing about it, but you but gotta do it. We couldn't film anything because yeah. you have to have your hands open, so. And I don't have any footage to say you gotta do it. You're gonna see cool stuff, and this is for life. We're certified for life. For life. For life. <laughs> Thank you.